Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Jason Yoder and today I'm going to show you how to take this image and turn it into this. And I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of magic with Lightroom's masking to make this happen. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. My channel is about my photography and all the adventures I have in capturing my images. And of course, I also show you how I pay for a lot of this travel, and that is through stock photography. Now, today I thought I'd do something I haven't done in a while, and that is to develop an image with all of you. So let's jump in the Lightroom and take a look at how we do this. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to go through this entire development process. Now, we're going to be using some of the advanced controls of Lightroom in particular. We're going to play around with some masking and then we're going to do a little bit of split toning to really bring out this image. Now, we this is actually a pretty good image. This is a sunset out in the Sonoran Desert. You can see we have our focal point is going to be a Sorraro cacti. I can see that we've got some light coming across it, but we got quite a bit of it in shadow. Well, let's start off with doing a little masking to try and help get this image to warm up a bit. So I'm going to go over here to the mask and I'm going to tell it to select the sky. Now this used to be a big problem in older versions of Lightroom where we didn't have this capability for it to auto detect the sky and look how accurate that thing is. All right now I can see uh oh, right here I can see it's kind of interpreting these mountains as being part of the sky so this is where we're going to be doing a little bit of the magic. This is the mask that we're currently using right now. So I'm just going to rename this to be my sky. Now what I want to do is to get this part right here and this part here out of the sky mask. So I'm going to click on the ellipse and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to intersect the mask with and then I choose what type of a mask I'm going to use. I'm going to use a brush, a brush, excuse me, a brush mask. All right, now with this brush mask, what I'm going to try to do is to, I'm going to invert whatever I create here. So I'm going to shrink this down a tad and I'm going to start filtering this out. Let me see here. Let's turn the flow all the way up on this one. And you can, whoop, went a little too far there. I'm going to undo that mask and I am going to start drawing down in this area. If you look carefully, you'll see the red of the sky mask is disappearing. Now remember, I chose to invert, which means it takes away the mask. And I can see a little bit of red in this mountain here, and I can see it over here. Let's make sure we get all that out of there. There we go. I got a little bit going up there, and I can see a little bit right there as well. Okay, now that takes care of that. So. What I'm now going to do is I want to take off the overlay so I can make some adjustments here. I really want to get rid of a lot of the blue in the sky, so I'm going to warm it up a bit. There we go. Now we've got more of an evening type of light, even type of color. But I also, I want to kind of soften out the image, get rid of a lot of the details in the sky. So I'm actually going to take the clarity and I'm going to reduce it. And you can see that really softens up the sky. All right, so I'm done with the sky mask. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. So next step here is I'm looking over here and I kind of want to make this even brighter as if the sun, the, the glare of the sun was more in that area. So let's turn the mask back on and I'm going to create a new mask. And in this case, I'm gonna do a radial gradient. And let's just go ahead and draw it in this area over here. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to reduce the clarity even more in this area and I'm going to slightly increase the exposure to make it even brighter. There we go. Now it looks like we really got a powerful warm light coming into our image. So let's go ahead and put the mask down for just a second here. Now one thing I really have to work on myself is edge detection. So I go around the edges to see if there's any distracting elements here and I find like a rock or something right here. So I'm gonna go into the healing tool. I'm gonna to select the content aware healing, size this down a bit, and I'm just gonna draw across here. We're gonna get rid of that little distraction that's down there. 
And there we go. Perfect. Gone. Doesn't even look like something was there. Okay, let's go into a little bit of split toning here. So I'm going to scroll down here and, well, first of all, I'm going to go into the hue. And I want to shift some of these colors to be slightly warmer. Now, remember, when you're working with these sliders, do a little bit at a time. Just a little bit can go a long way. I'm going to shift the orange a little red, the yellow a little bit towards orange, and the green towards yellow. And I think I might have gone a little too far on the orange or on the yellow here. So I'm going to go back just a hair. There we go. Much better. All right. Now for the split toning, I'm going to be using the shadows and the highlights. Now when you do this, you take this little circle and you drag it towards the color you want. And the farther you drag it, the more intense it's going to get. So we're going to back off and we're just going to do a little bit of color here. There we go. And in the shadows, I'm going to put a little bit of blue. Now let's back off a little here, make it a little lighter. Now I'm going to turn off the shadows on, off, off, and on. Now it's really hard to see the difference, but there is a slight difference there. And again, here's with the warmer color on the highlights. Just a little bit is being done. All we want is just some minor adjustments. We're just about there with this particular image. Now, I'm looking here, and this is getting a little distracting. The two bottom corners. I've got a bush down here, and I've got this, this tree stump down here. So I kind of wanted to take away a little bit of the emphasis on that. So let's go up, back up to our masking tool. I'm going to create a new radial gradient, and I am going to create it down here in this area here. I'm going to remove the overlay so I no longer look at the red, and I'm just going to drop the exposure just a tad. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to create another radial mask down here. Create radial mask radial gradient and start down here and get this area here once again before I make my adjustments I'm going to remove the show overlay and just very subtly put a little shadow down there and that really hard to notice but really helps to take away the uh, emphasis the tendency of your eye to be drawn still a little troubled though with uh, this tree stump down here so let's go do another one of our radial gradients, and I'm just gonna do it right here in this tree, on the tree stump, but it's this highlight is what I'm concerned about. So for this one here, so I know which one I'm working with, we're gonna rename this, this is gonna be the stump, and I'm gonna click on the ellipses, and I'm gonna go ahead and do an intersection mask with this. And this time I am going to do a luminance range. I wanna focus on the brightness, not anything in shadow. So luminance range, and I'm gonna draw a little box right there. All right, well, that, didn't, that got a little bit too much of this, these items back here. So let's go ahead and we're gonna control Z, we're gonna undo it. Let's try a different one. I'm going to do an intersection, and this time we are going to do a color range. Let's try that. And again, I'm going to draw my brush, sampling those colors, and there, much, much better. Okay, we're going to go ahead and remove that overlay, and now I'm going to drop the exposure just a little bit. And there, you can see how it took away that uh, the the ability of the stump to draw the user's eye. Now, nothing I could do, I could try and use the content wear healing tool to get rid of it, but I wanted to show you one of those tricks with the intersections. Intersections join the output of two different masks together, so you can have finer control over what you are uh, creating a mask for. Now, one more thing. I wanna try and bring out some of the highlights here, or the shadows, but just inside this cactus. So. Let's play around here. I'm gonna do a brush mask. Now I'm holding control and rolling my mouse wheel to change the size of that brush. Let's just go ahead and brush in just the cactus as best we can. I'm a little concerned about the mountain in the background also coming out. 
All right, I'm gonna lower the size just a little bit more here because we're gonna get really close to the mountain. There we go. And then right here, I'm gonna be really careful trying to keep as much of this on the cactus as I can and less on that mountain. Looks like I need to add just a little bit there and maybe a little bit right there. Okay, there is our cactus, but this mask is gonna affect everything. So let's go ahead and rename this. We're gonna call this one our cactus. And now I'm gonna do another intersection. And once again, we're gonna do this by, uh, let's see. Yeah, let's try the color. We'll do it by color this time and see what happens. I'm going to draw in this area here, which seems to have a lot of cactus and shadow. And there, look at that. The highlighted areas are not part of this mask. The shadow areas are. I'm going to go ahead and remove my overlay. And now I'm going to see if I can bring out those shadows just a tad. There we go. Now, the thing is, they're starting to look a little fake if I get too bright in there. So I'm also going to warm them up just a tad. And that's going to help it to match the color. Let's bring a little more shadow out. And it's getting a little white in there, so a little cool. So I'm going to warm them up again, ever so slightly. And there, now it matches. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the mask. And that right there is a really great image. Now, I do want to try just one more thing, just to see what it looks like. I'm going to try and soften up some of the cacti that are in the background. So let's go back over here to our mask. Don't know if I'm gonna like this or not, but we're gonna try it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do another radial gradient. And I'm gonna do it across the mountains and those cacti right there. All right, let's see what this looks like. We're gonna go ahead and reduce that clarity to soften the image a bit. And then I'm gonna turn off the masking. And I think that worked out pretty well. I think we're gonna keep this one. All right, so here is the before image, and here is the after. Now I'd like to say that uh, I have, I've used this same base image, and I did all these procedures before, and uploaded the stock photography, and then the last week that's been uploaded, it sold three times. So I'm pretty sure I've got an image here that people are going to like. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now, for my, uh, I'd like to kind of acknowledge here some of our, over here, one of these two, I would like to acknowledge some of my recent subscribers to this channel and thank you all for your support. I also like to invite you to go out to patreon.com forward slash EWJ. That is where you can download my 4K desktop backgrounds, get early access to this vi these videos, and also in some cases, you're gonna get private videos that are only for the Expedition team. All right, guys, that's all I've got. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.